They then uh, brought a burak. This burak is a special creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith it's mentioned that it was beautiful, uh, sh of shining color, um, and it resembled, or it was larger than a donkey, uh, but smaller than a mule in terms of its size. The burak is the animal that the prophets of Allah used for, their trans for traveling large distances. And so on this night of Isra and Mi'raj, this burak was brought by the angel Jibreel and the angel Mikail. Uh, Jibreel held the stirrup and Mikail held the reins. They told the Prophet to mount the burak. The burak shaked uh, in or moved slightly away when the Prophet والسلام, attempted to mount him. And then Jibreel said, Aren't you ashamed to do this? No one is closer to Allah than this person who is mounting you now. In the hadith it's mentioned that the Burak uh, felt ashamed at what he had done. And then it stood very still and the Prophet والسلام, mounted the Burak. The Prophet والسلام, says that this Burak which was of clear white color, medium in size, was so quick in movement that each step it took would take it to the farthest limits of the horizon, as far as the eyes could see. In one step it would travel that distance, so quick it could move. Then they traveled with the Prophet ﷺ on the Burak, led by Jibreel ﷺ, and accompanied by Mikail alayhi salam, the, the two prophets. They traveled and then they reached a place and Jibril alayhi salam told the Burak to stop and then he told the prophet to get off and to pray to Rakat there. The prophet did so and then he remounted Jibreel alayhi salam asked him, do you know the, where this place is or which, which, which place this is? And then he told him, you prayed in Taibah. This is the first stop of the Prophet alayhi salatu You prayed in Taibah, a land of pastures, and the migration will take place here. Jibreel alayhi salam telling the Prophet alayhi salatu of the migration. Uh, to Taiba, and Taiba is the name for Medina, even up to this day, uh, in the beautiful lines of poetry, in the Qasaid that is recited by the Muslims, Ya Taiba, re addressing Medina, the beautiful land of the Prophet, or the beautiful city of the Prophet Wasallam. So the Prophet, on this night of Isra and Miraj, as he was traveling to Jerusalem, he made several stops. The first one was at Taiba, and he prayed there. He continued on his journey in this lightning flight with the Burak. They reached another place and Jibreel salam told the Burak to stop, asked the Prophet salam to get off and to pray two rakat. He did so and then he remounted the Burak. And then Jibreel salam said, you have prayed at Madian, at the tree of Musa. And Madian is on the outskirts of Tabuk on the shores of the Red Sea. And this tree of Musa is the place where Sayyidina Musa salam, stopped when uh, he was running away from Fir'aun and he left Egypt uh, and he went uh, to this place and he stopped there to rest under this tree. This is the same place that the Prophet والسلام, stopped and prayed. Then he remounted the Burak and they continued in this lightning flight. And then they reached another place and Jibreel salam, uh, told the Burak to stop and uh, asked the Prophet sallallahu to, uh, to descend and to perform two rakat of salah which the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, did. And then after he remounted Jibreel salam, told him 
that you have prayed at the mountains of Sina, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam. Spoke to Musa alayhi salam at Sina to give him the commandments. Um, and th th it is as a result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to Musa alayhi salam at this particular place where the Prophet prayed that Musa alayhi salam earned the title of Kalimullah, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to. Then he reached <coughs> a land where the palaces of Asham became visible to him. Jibril alayhi salam told him, uh, alight and pray, come out from the Burak and pray. He did so. And Jibreel alayhi salam asked him, where you've prayed? And he said, and then he told him, Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi you have prayed in Bait Lahem or Bethlehem, where Isa ibn Maryam was born. And so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam continued on his journey towards Jerusalem. As he mounted the Burak and he continued to travel again, he saw a devil from the jinn who was trying to get near to him, holding a firebrand. And everywhere the Prophet ﷺ turned, he could see this devil from among the jinn. Jibreel ﷺ said, I'll teach you some words to say that will destroy him and his firebrand. And then Jibreel ﷺ told him to say, A'udhu bil wajhillahi al-kareem. وَبِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَاتِ الَّتِي لَا يُجَوِّزُهُنَّ بَرٌ وَلَا فَاجِرٌ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا ذَرَأَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمِنْ فِتَنِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَمِنْ تَوَارِكَ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ إِلَّا تَارِكٍ يَتْرُكُ بِخَيْرٍ يَا رَحْمَانٍ I seek refuge in the blessed face of Allah and in the perfect words of Allah which neither the righteous nor the disobedient overstep from evil that descends from the heaven an evil that ascends to it, an evil that is created in the earth, and the trials of night and day, and the visitors of night and day, except the visitor that brings goodness upon us. O most merciful one, Amin. The Prophet ﷺ repeated these words. And then he said, the devil fell dead on his face and his firebrand was extinguished. And uh, the words of this dua incidentally are, are contained in uh, my book uh, on this entire series on this topic called Miraj al uh, which you can uh, obtain through visiting our website uh, www.islamicforumonline.com. The Prophet والسلام, continued on this journey to Jerusalem and he saw many of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that was one of the main purposes of the Isra and Miraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, Subhana ladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa ladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al sami al basir. Glory be to Allah who took his slave from the sacred mosque, sacred masjid, masjid al haram in Mecca to the farthest mosque, masjid al aqsa in Jerusalem whose precincts and surroundings we did blessed so that we can show him of our signs. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this journey of Isra and Miraj to show the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam of the great signs that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam would now be able to have a vision for the future, knowing well of many of the things that happened. And this Isra and Miraj Bless the Prophet with great blessings that 
he was able to to foretell events uh, which would happen after this Isra and Miraj. Many things, many are the prophecies of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After this Isra and Miraj, things that he knew, things that he foretold that would happen in the future, because he saw all of these things in the Isra and Miraj. For example, uh, when he the first stop he made at Taiba, uh, and then Jibril alayhi salam told him this would be the land of migration. So the Prophet alayhi salam knew of the migration long before it happened. He knew of the place that he would be migrating to long before. Uh, the the Muslims knew about this or he told the Muslims about this and so every other uh, detail of whatever happened uh, the, the the signs were shown to him were given to him and of what would happen uh, even after his time with his followers with his ummah until the day of judgment and what would happen on the day of judgment as he returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is there with his followers to protect them and to intercede on their behalf so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam then arrived in, in Jerusalem. There, there are several other events that took place, several other signs that he saw. In, in our future programs, we will discuss some of them in, in greater detail, insha'Allah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam went to or, or arrived in Jerusalem. Jibril alayhi salam tied the burak to the temple of Jerusalem. And then the Prophet Ali his altered ring of that temple. And then the Prophet Ali his salat was salam did uh, some specific and important actions uh, with the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the prophets of Allah, all of them, to be there at Masjid al Aqsa when the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam arrived in Jerusalem at Masjid al-Aqsa. And then several conversations took place between the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and the other Prophets. They praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam praised Allah for the bounties and blessings and unique favors that he had received. And so the, the, the other great prophets of Allah uh, praised them. And then finally, uh, after the, the, the Ulul Azm in Mil Rusul, the great prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and messengers of Allah did so, all the other prophets praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in words that they chose to, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And finally, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in magnificent ways. And then after he finished, Ibrahim alayhi, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ibrahim said, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has exceeded all of us, has been better than all of us, is superior to all of us in his praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the prophets were gathered and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the angels, all of them to be gathered there as well. They lined up in rows and then Jibreel alayhi salam took hold of the hand of the Prophet and, and uh, guided him forward uh, to be in front of all of them, to, to be their Imam or leader. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam prayed uh, salah leading all the other Prophets and messengers of Allah and the angels of Allah in this two rakat of prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a significant event because it signified the transferring of religious leadership to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He was now Sayyidul Mursaleen and Imam al muttaqin He was now the master and leader of all the messengers of Allah, of all the prophets of Allah. And he was the Imam, he was the leader of all the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. From the beginning of creation to the end of creation. This is the amazing significance of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam leading the other prophets in prayer and leading the angels in prayer. All of them followed him and followed his, his leadership, followed his Imam. He was their Imam, he was their leader. This is now established by this particular, particular event in the Isra and Miraj. 
the Prophet Sayyid al Mursaleen, the leader of all the messengers and prophets of Allah, Imam al Muttaqeen, the leader of all the God fearing servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is his status, that is his position, that is his importance. By extension, now also those who follow him also receive this great honor. The Ummah of the Prophet Ali wasalam, those who follow the example and the teaching and the Sunnah of the Prophet Ali wasalam, they became the leading Ummah, the leader of all the Ummahs now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that in the Quran by his very re revelation. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of ummah. You are the best of nation. Raised up for the guidance of humanity. So the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, leading, the leader of the ummahs. Is the best of the ummah. But this is not because only of a title that we have. To say that we are the followers and the messenger, we are the followers or, or the members of the ummah of the Prophet. ﷺ. There has to be some qualifications. The claim alone is not enough, and this is important for us to understand. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi, wa tanhawna anil munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. This claim must be followed up with concrete actions. To, to say that we are the best is not enough. Of course, it's a great honor to be a Muslim. It's a great blessing to be from the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu But that alone is not enough and that alone would not lead to our success. We must believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with a sincere true belief. We must practice our belief in our lives. We must enjoin righteousness. This is extremely important. This is the raison d'etre of the Muslim Ummah. This is the pillar for the existence of the Ummah. The Ummah exists for this purpose and because of this purpose. And the moment we leave off this purpose, we no longer constitute an Ummah as it ought to be. The, the enjoyment of righteousness and the forbidding of wrong to enjoin righteousness, to forbid wrong. This is what we need to do. And it starts with ourselves, to enjoin righteousness on ourselves, to forbid wrong on ourselves, to ensure that we do what is right and stay away from what is wrong as individuals. And then to, in an ever widening circle, to reach out to others, to our, our blood, our family members, our blood relatives, to our friends, to those who are close to us, and then to other members of our Muslim community, and then to the wider society at large, to promote goodness, to enjoin righteous conduct for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to forbid indecency, to forbid evil, to forbid wrong. This is the reason death, the reason to be for the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was the leader of the prophets and messengers and of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Isra and Miraj established this point by this practical demonstration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show everyone this. And he started with his prophets and messengers, the best, the cream of the crop of his creation. So they would knew this. And of course, they foretold this, the coming of this prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to their followers. But here it is, they are there praying behind him, following his leadership. And he excels them, as Sayyidina Ibrahim salam says, in his praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he excels them in all aspects of life. Musa salam was a kalim Allah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him on this earth. But Rasulullah was, sp was spoken to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heavens, in front of the harsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and so it is with all the other uh, qualities of the prophets and messengers, the Prophet ﷺ uh, uh, surpassed them. He was the very best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the, the stop at Jerusalem is significant in this event or the unfolding of the events of the Isra and Miraj. 
because Jerusalem has great significance for us as Muslims. This place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed, alladhi barakna hawlahu, as he tells us in the Quran. The place of uh, many of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many of the great prophets of Allah walked on, on that earth, on that ground, and that, in that noble city of Al-Aqsa, Jerusalem. Uh, the Jerusalem, the first Qibla of the Prophet وسلم, the first Qibla of the Muslims. So it has great significance for us. After he finished this prayer, this Turak out of prayer, then Ibrahim السلام, glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, praise be to Allah who has taken me as his intimate friend. Meaning being, he is the Khalilullah who has given me an immense kingdom, who has made me a prayerful community, and one by whom prayer is led, who has rescued me from the fire and made it cool and safe for me. Referring to the incident when uh, the uh, people of the, uh, in the time of Nimru tried to kill uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam by throwing him into that huge fire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the fire to be cool and safe on Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then Musa alayhi salam glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Praise be to Allah ta'ala who has spoken to me directly. The Kalimullah, one of the titles of, Allah, of Musa alayhi salam. Who has brought to pass the destruction of Fir'aun and the salvation of the children of Israel at my hands, and who has made from among my community a people who guide others through truth and establish justice upon it. Then Dawood salam glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Praise be to Allah who has brought me an immense kingdom, who has softened iron from my hands and subjected to me the mountains and the birds which laud them, and who has given me wisdom and unmistakable judgment in my speech. Dawud al-Islam, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Sulaiman alayhi salam glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Praise be to Allah, who has subjected the winds to my command, as well as the devils, so that they did as I wished, and constructed for me elevated sanctuaries, images, large bowls the size of ponds, and vessels fixed in their spot due, due to their size, who has taught me the language of birds and has brought me a portion of every good thing, who has subjected to me the armies of the jinns and the birds and has preferred me over many of his believing servants, who has brought me an immense kingdom which no one after me may possess. And who has made me king who has made my kingdom a goodly one wherein there is no reckoning nor punishment? Then say Naisa alayhi salam glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Praise be to Allah, who has made me his word, Kalimatullah, who has fashioned me after Adam's likeness, whom he created out of earth, then said to him, Be and he was who has taught me the book and the wisdom and the Torah who has, and the Injil, who has caused me to heal the blind and the leper and to raise the dead by Allah's permission, who has raised me and cleansed me and granted me and my mother protection against the cursed devil so that the devil has no path by which to harm us. And thereafter, every prophet of Allah glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best language that they could. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, all of you have glorified Allah and I am going to glorify him. And he said, Alhamdulillahi ladhi arsalani rahmatan lil alameen wa kafatan lil nasi bashiran wa nadheera wa anzala alayya القرآن فيه تبيانا لكل شيء وجعل أمتي خير أمة أخرجت للناس وجعل أمتي وسطا وجعل أمتي هم الأولون والآخرون 
وشرح لي صدري وودع عني وزري ورفع لي ذكري وجعلني فاتحا خاتما Praise be to Allah who has sent me as a mercy to the worlds sent to everyone without exception a bearer of glad tidings on a warner who has caused to descend upon me the Quran in which there is perfect ex exposition of all things who has made my community the best community ever brought out for the benefit of mankind and who has made my community a median and a middle community the balanced community and who has made my community in truth the first in paradise even though the last in creation of all communities and who has expanded my breast and relieved me of my burdens and who has exalted and elevated my name and made me the opener of everything and the sealer of everything up and here this sayyidna ibrahim alayhi salam said in this matter of praising allah muhammad has exceeded and surpassed all of you then they talked about the hour of judgment this is the conversation now among the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establishing the paramount importance and the superior position of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam even on the day of judgment the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam continued in his description of this Isra and Miraj he said that after this stop in Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem he was presented with the Miraj which is a being that looked like a ladder or a staircase and I ascended to heaven using the Miraj this Miraj he said was the most beautiful sight but before being presented with the Miraj, I want to share with you an important incident that took place between Jibril alayhi salam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Jibril alayhi salam brought three containers, in some narration, two containers, in other narrations, uh, three containers to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet said at that point, he felt a thirst greater than any thirst he had ever felt. Felt really thirsty. Jibril al Islam presented him with a container, a vessel of wine and a vessel of milk. In the narrations that mention three vessels, the third vessel, it's honey, and in some other narrations, water. So when we combine these uh, different narrations uh, four things are presented to the Prophet ﷺ, wine milk honey and water the Prophet ﷺ chose the vessel of milk and drank therefrom Jibril ﷺ said you have chosen fitra the natural disposition the natural way had you chosen to drink wine your community would have strayed from the right way and none of them would have followed you in the other narration it is mentioned that if you had chosen the vessel with water your community would have perished by drowning the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam then ascended this mirage or this staircase or ladder he said that it had alternate stairs of silver and gold and came down from the highest and amplest garden of paradise Janatul Firdaus 
It was encrusted with pearls and surrounded with angels on its right and left. The Prophet began his ascent. There is also another narration that mentions that the Prophet والسلام, was standing on a rock at the beginning of this ascent. And when he just started the ascent, the rock followed him. And then he noticed that and he motioned with his hand for the rock to remain there not to follow him. And the rock remained in that suspended position. The Prophet والسلام, said he ascended with Jibreel on this mirage until they reach one of the gates of the nearest heaven called Bab al Hafadah. Thereupon an angel stood guard named Ismail, the angel standing guard at the door of the lowest of the heavens or the first of the heavens. He never ascended higher to the heavens, nor did he descend to the earth, except on the day of the death of the Prophet ﷺ. In front of him, this guardian angel, stood 70,000 angels, and each of them commanding an army of 70,000 more angels guarding the heavens. Jibreel asked for the gate of the lowest of the heavens or the first heaven to be opened. He was asked, who is with you? He said, Muhammad. He was responded, welcome to him from his family. May Allah grant him long life, a brother and a deputy. What an excellent brother and deputy. The gate was then opened. They went in and they saw Adam السلام, the father of humanity, just as he was on the very first day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him in his complete form. The spirits of the prophets and the faithful offspring and their faithful offsprings were being shown to him. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, saw Adam on his right side was a great dark mass and a fragrant smell coming from it. On the left side was a great dark mass and a foul smell coming from it. When Adam السلام, looked to his right, he would smile. But when he looked to his, lef to his left side, he would be sad, he would weep. The Prophet والسلام, then greeted Adam and Adam returned the greetings and welcomed him, saying, Welcome to the righteous son. Welcome to the righteous prophet. Welcome, my dear brother. And he expressed faith in his prophethood. The Prophet والسلام, then heard from Jibreel that Adam والسلام, was there in the first heaven, the very first of creation. That those that the black masses represented the souls of the children of Adam السلام. On the right side were the pious souls and on the left side were the evil souls. Adam السلام, would consign the uh, pious souls to Iliyin, to the place where the pious believing souls would, uh, would stay after they, they die and they leave this dunya. And he would consign the evil souls to Sajin, the place where the evil souls would stay after they leave this dunya, on their journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet والسلام, then continued on his journey with Jibreel السلام, on this mirage as they proceeded through the heavens. The Prophet والسلام, said that in the second heaven, I visited Isa السلام, and Yahya. John the Baptist, peace be upon them, and saluted them. They returned my salutation and said, Good brother, blessed be thy arrival. Then they expressed their faith in my prophethood. Now, this is significant, uh, the fact that the, the different prophets, that the Prophet ﷺ met in the different heavens, greeted him as their brother, 
and express faith in the prophethood in other words that they are following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah expressing faith in the prophethood of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was the one that all of humanity must now follow because if the prophets of allah can be following him and expressing faith in his prophethood then what about the people here on earth they should also express faith in the prophethood of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in other words accept him as the final prophet and messenger of allah and follow his way follow his sunnah the prophet alaihi salatu wasallam then reached the third heaven and met yusuf alaihi salam saluted him the prophet said yusuf alaihi salam look like a full moon in striking radiance the most beautiful handsome man he welcomed me and returned my salut salutation and expressed faith in my prophethood yusuf alaihi salam doing the same thing as well then i was carried to the fourth heaven where i met idris alaihi salam and the same happened then I was carried to the fifth heaven there i met harun alaihi salam aaron a handsome old man i the handsomest old man i ever saw with silver white hair and a long white beard I saluted him and he returned my salutation and expressed his faith in my prophethood. Then I reached the sixth heaven. I met Musa alayhi salam there. I saluted him. He returned my salutation, expressed faith in my prophethood. Then I reached the seventh heaven and met Ibrahim alayhi salam there and saluted him. Here, however, there is a slight difference in the way he was welcomed the previous prophets welcomed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as my dear brother ibrahim alaihi salam welcomed him as my dear son because ibrahim alaihi salam is abul anbiya the father of all the prophets of allah so he welcomed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as welcome my dear son uh, and expressed faith in his prophethood he also ibrahim alaihi salam following the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says then i was show, shown al bayt al ma'mur now the, the other point that the scholars have mentioned is that ibrahim alayhi salam was in the seventh heaven and the seventh heaven the highest of the heavens is closest to the arsh of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ibrahim alayhi salam was in this heaven because he is the khalilullah he is a special friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the highest of the heaven of the heavens that is closest to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet said after that i was shown al bayt al ma'mur the oft visited house that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran in surah najm he said this is the kaaba in the heavens we have the kaaba on this earth and then there is a kaaba in the heavens al bayt al ma'mur he said, it is circumambulated, Tawaf, daily by 70,000 angels. 70,000 angels are performing Tawaf around this Kaaba in the heavens, Al Bayt Al Mamur. But there are so many angels that are waiting their turn to perform Tawaf that. The angels who once performed tawaf around it will not get a second opportunity to do so. Subhanallah. This is amazing. There are so many angels that are waiting their turn patiently to perform tawaf around Al Baytul Ma'mur, the Kaab in the heavens. They only get one chance to do this. 